Besides hope, comfort, and happiness, what are your ethics and spiritual values? Are you satisfied with who you are? Is your conscience at peace? What can you do proactively to improve yourself? Then, of course, he goes on with the standards of taking care of your health and your body and your sleep, letting go of control. Talked about that a little bit. Communicating, of course, is in there. Finding somebody that you can trust is another added additional note. And then what I wanted to also mention this part is what you might forget or not see, or again, he's saying it out loud. Law enforcement agencies in particular train their officers to be cynical about everything, to distrust human nature and people's motives. That worldview is essential if officers are to keep safe and to stay alive on the job. However, what's essential for physical survival at work can become devastating to first responders' home lives and emotional well-being. If a spouse or children become as strangers, it is because the first responder has estranged them by allowing the negative aspects of the profession to emotionally separate them from those they need most. When first responders treat the good people in their lives in the same way they treat the ones they encounter on the street while on duty, they alienate themselves from those who could provide a lifeline of support and critical care for them. That is page 46. What I also wanted to say is this book, just in general, you have to want to care people. And when we are so used to our inner character doesn't matter, taking care of ourselves is selfish, all of that sort of involved, reading this kind of stuff doesn't always get through to people in terms of why. All this self-care, why? It's not going to happen to me. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm here to take care of others. All this sort of business, but I hope this is getting through to you that basically because if you're not trained in the academy or whatever it is take things into your own hands right I talk about advancing your skills upping your game right we got to handle our shit all of us people in this world first responder or not you would have thought I would have been one in a past life I think a veteran a veteran and a firefighter maybe I don't know I don't know I still don't know emotional uh Wellness strategies, he continues to list more things, controlling your personal time, live life as a survivor, not a victim, uh, relate to the true purpose of your profession, and on and on and on. There's so many good things in this book. And then what I wanted to end with, um, while there are other, I may actually end with a couple of final questions for you. Let's do that first, actually. Page 96, what are your most important personal relationships and what makes them important? Maintaining support through your personal relationships is essential. This question is designed to help you discover which relationships are the most important and what you derive from them. Once this is understood, you can work at not taking these relationships for granted and can actively pursue enhancing them for your own lifeline and wellness. I think this is really just addressing what life means to you, what is most meaningful to you, in my situation friendships and not having much of a family around me growing up and all this sort of business currently in my life going on so friendships that's a true friend is is very important to me so i want to hold on to the the very few that i have and realizing you know later in life how we have very few of them right maybe one or two how can you improve your most important relationships? What can you do to heal hurt relationships and make up for past wrongs? Learning to let go, forgiving, and asking for forgiveness are important elements in a healthy and mature relationship. Okay, finding things that comfort you. And then lastly on this part, what I wanted to say is that um, this is a prayer he has at the end. It's called Prayer of the Emergency First Responder. And for you, those of you that cannot relate to this word or have negative um, association with this word prayer, which I did growing up, I had negative thoughts around it. And when I kind of thought of it more so in connecting with myself, um, I was able to accept it more. And so you can also think of it as intentional thought. This is maybe something that you could post and print out, look at every day in between calls because it really does help you know, um, remind yourself you are protected and um, remind yourself that you can have meaningful careers doing what you do amongst all of the chaos. 
and the different things that you go through, including people threatening your life, whatever type of first responder you are, negativity, people out there, okay? Negativity, negative energy, all of that, okay? Prayer of the emergency first responder. Living spirit of all life, love, and compassion, guide me to selflessly serve those who need me. Lead me to go and be where I can be of most use and do the most good. Help me to bring justice and peace to those who have suffered. Enable me to protect and give life with mercy. Sustain and protect my spirit that I will be inspired with greater purpose. Protect me from the evil of others. Nurture and heal my soul that I will not suffer from what I see. Help me to serve this day with compassion, integrity, and mercy. Give me the inner strength to endure heartache, pain, and frustration. Comfort my spirit that whatever I may face this day, I will forever remain at peace. Apparently, I picked a poor time to record with the yelling in the background. Uh, but anyway, again, Bulletproof Spirit, I hope you check out the episode and it provides valuable information to you. And like I said, one of the best things about this book are the self-awareness questions, which I think are um, very beneficial because it's a lot of what I promote that the answers lie within ourselves. And um, yes, the answers, the answers are there if we just start asking. Okay, so I hope you check out the episode and uh, thank you for checking out this video. Bye.